welcome back to Laser Penguin Games, and today I'm going to be going over a, I guess a guide, a tutorial for Tukaiden 2. Just uh, a lot of stuff you should know before you get into the game that'll save you <laughs> a lot of time. Um, and we're going to go ahead and start with, before even getting in the game, you're going to want to go to... So for me, I have it on Steam. I'm not sure how it's going to work for consoles, but I'm guessing somewhere on the store you'll be able to get this. There's free DLC uh, where you will be able to pick up this Tekken 2 Tenko outfit, and it is level four armor, and you'll be able to buy up for I think a hundred. 100,000 of the current in game currency, so it still takes you a bit to, to get it. They don't, you can't uh, you just equip the armor right away, but it's uh, it's not bad to use for the um, mid game as well. You're gonna want to pick up four free Matamas from the DLC uh, <laughs> stores. Um, yeah, it's just an extra f three, uh, four, three, three, four, four Matamas. That uh, you can't even get in the game. You have to just download them. <laughs> so it took me a long time to figure it out. And I'll say I went through the whole game not even knowing that they existed. Um, so that's a very, very good tip to just pick them up before you start playing. And you'll you'll have more selection uh, right off the bat for your Matamas as well. So that is a very good starting tip get yourself some free stuff alright so we're gonna start off with explaining basically how everything works in town which is where you're gonna spend a lot of the time playing in this game so first you're gonna want to pick your weapon and to do that there is a guy right here that will train you in all the weapons since they're all different, now you can see here I have only, I have barely done any, um, but the training here will explain all the different moves um, your weapon will do because they're all quite different and they all provide different um, defense abilities as well. Whether it's like some sort of block or dodge or like parry uh, and how to use those. So depending on which weapon um, you want to use, you're definitely going to want to do that training, um, and it'll tell you. And then it's going to offer a few, a few more, um, basically trainings about um, how to use all the different styles of matamas as well, which could be um, pretty useful. And just learning, there's a lot to learn uh, right away. They kind of, it's, it's, you might be uh, <laughs> just just thinking like boy this is too much to learn at once and it's alright you can just t take it slowly uh, I'll say this is the main hub of town here at the front uh, you'll see the gate uh, where you can just go out for single player um, storyline missions and then you have your stone here which will let you go play online with your friends um, or jump around the, the map or change the difficulty setting and we're going to talk a bit about that more later, but let's get into the rest of the parts of town. So, also here, you, you come to talk to um, this girl, or I guess if you're earlier in the story, <laughs> so spoiler alert, um, it's her dad that you talk to to go on missions. Um, but it'll be the same spot, and then you can, you can uh, go through the missions or the ruins. And if you're online, it's the same spot you come to here to... Um, set up a mission for you and your friends to participate in. Alright, so we'll start with, I guess this is one of the first things you're going to do after you download um, the DLC characters. Um, you're going to want to come to your house here, because you're not going to have them at time. You're going to be like, oh, I downloaded them, where are they? Uh, you got to come to the corner table here, and there'll be a little mail symbol, and then you'll have a mail here, and you open it, and then it'll have... Matama's in it. I think it's from Slayer HQ you see here and then you'll get a bunch of free Matamas and the armor and that's that and then you have the your dresser here which lets you 
Um, create armor sets so you can quickly swap, which I really haven't done because I just use the same one for the most part. But I guess I'll once I start doing more builds, I will do that. I guess you can change your character appearance here as well if you didn't like the the character you created, and you can turn on and off your your head equipment here if you want to show it or not show it, and then also you can change out your armatamas and your actual weapons and armor as well. All from your house there. All right, so for weapons and armor. There is a blacksmith here. You'll see there's a second blacksmith right now in town. He's the special one that comes later game, so don't worry about him. Um, he's, you'll just unlock him through the story mode, but this is your basic blacksmith where you can create weapons, um, fortify weapons, and reforge weapons. So creating weapon, obviously, is pretty simple. You're just going to make a weapon, and it'll tell you the tier on the left side. Uh, highest tier being 6, lowest tier being 1. Um, a cool thing you should note, actually well, not a cool thing, you should just know is basically you only want to deal with um, uh, reforging weapons into tier 3 weapons um, because the way the game works is it's going to go from 3 to 6 only so anything you have that's a 1 or a 2 if you can get to a 3 there's probably going to be a reforge later in the game that's going to upgrade to a tier 6 weapon uh, if you end up with a 4 or 5, the weapon is stuck there and it will never be a good endgame weapon, so you just get <laughs> screwed on that. But also you might be waking a tier 4 or 5 for um, middle to a little bit later game before you get a tier 6 weapon. Also you might want to upgrade before then, but uh, just don't spend too many resources uh, leveling up the tier 4 and 5 weapons because they're never going to get you anywhere basically you're always going to end up tr trying to create a tier 6 or upgrading a tier 3 to a tier 6 uh, and it's the same exact thing for the, for the armors where you're going to have um, armor sets it's unfortunate that um, certain certain looking um, armors you'll never be able to get uh, end game because there are no tier 6 versions of them just like the free tenko armor you're going to get from the DLC is a tier 4 armor which is also going to be good for mid game and easy to for you to get because it's only going to cost you the in game currency. And I don't think many materials. So you, know, you can take a look. Um, reforging. Uh, so you can't. You can see here you can't reforge it. So it's going to be stuck at at four, but it's got some decent stats on it for a level four armor. So you'll be able to use it for a while uh, if you can get it pretty early. And that's pretty much it for weapons and armor. Also, you're going to want to fortify them. Um, and you can only go up to plus nine. Uh, I mean, basically, at the start of the game, it's only going to let you go up to plus three. And as you progress the storyline, um, your blacksmith will unlock up to plus six, then up to plus nine. And then, very late in the game, you're going to unlock this extra blacksmith here that's going to travel around. Um, normally, he's not here in town, but he'll let you advance your weapons to plus 10 then you do some more quests then plus 11 and then eventually plus 12 I think it's a year pretty much almost beat the, the story mode single player by then but you'll see uh, he should let me uh, what do I have a gun here that I can go let's see if we can get a little so I don't have enough diamonds for that but he'll let me uh, elemental attack which I don't want right now <laughs> so I'll have to wait till I, till I get more diamonds which <laughs> I will I just used a lot of other weapons so far so that is the blacksmith and how you're creating your new weapons and everything there's also a store here and he'll sell you basic items um, depending on how safe certain areas in the map are um, it'll increase the items that he sells. So you can see here I have pretty much safe everywhere. And then he'll sell me all these. I mean, most of the time you're going to want to buy out almost everything he has. Um, just every time you get out of a mission or come back to town, just take a look at what he's got. And you just buy it all <laughs> if you got the money for it. Because uh, the, the food you're going to use for buffs, so you're going to need that food to take to the other lady. Uh, and the machina circuits are for the um, 
Machina, which we'll take a look in a second. And then you're going to want to buy some of this extra stuff for your tank goes as well. So that's pretty much how the store works. So if you see the map, basically, you'll see different areas. Um, and these missions will pop up, which will... Uh, the more of those missions you do, the safer the area will get. So if you want to make it so the first area is pretty safe, you can just do a lot of... Because these missions, once you do them, there'll be a time limit and a new one will pop up. So you can just keep doing them. And then also the, some certain missions um, will that you'll have to complete as well in both multiplayer and single player to make that zone safer. Uh, so this this is going to affect that as well. So you got a carpenter here, and <laughs> see I fail the mission on my machina, and I'm going to repair him. So you can dispatch him out there to get extra items. You'll get him, I think, midway through the game. He hasn't really affected the game much for me, but you'll see the different zones you can send him to, and if you make that zone safer, it's going to give him a higher chance to succeed, and also you can upgrade him as well. Um, which I'm missing. Uh, mine's not very high because I just haven't bothered. And then you need to find basically um, items in the world to uh, just throughout the world. You have to find certain areas and then you can upgrade it eventually. I think mine's only level 2 and I have the circuits for level 4 but I just haven't, haven't done much with them. Also you'll start getting I think Tenkos are pretty early in the game and you're going to want to, as soon as you get it um, start feeding it. So you're gonna give it snacks, um, which is the these are the top three items you're gonna want to give. So you're gonna the, the gorgeous Tango box is the most expensive one. It's gonna be the best item for them. Then Tango lunch box and then Fox Ray. So let's just give them let's give them a lunch box. So when you give them food, they're gonna be happy, and they will offer to come help you on a mission. Um. It's only, they're only really going to help you though if you just exit the door at the front of the village. If you actually go to select a mission from the person at the desk, they do not come with you. So they're only going to help you basically in the open world. Um, once you get them with high enough affection, you can divide one of your Matamas into them and they'll gain extra abilities and they'll help you basically during battle a little bit extra. It's just like a little extra bonus to your party. All right, and then we have this lady here, Kion, and she is going to sell us the food buffs, basically. Also, that's why you're going to the other store all the time to make sure that you have the materials. Also, certain certain things you're going to need to kill monsters to get as well, but some, most of the basic ones are just um, mostly bought from the store items. And then, as you do quests, um, she'll unlock more um, more meals with greater buffs. And you can go ahead and just be like, give me that, and it'll, it'll tell you what the buff does. You can take a look at the three things you can get. I think it's a chance for the small, medium, or large. So let's go ahead and eat some food. Activated the large. Nice. So you got a 60 minute buff. Same thing with the shrine. So you're going to have want to have these pretty much active at all times. So make sure if you have them, the branches, that you're always activating your growth prayer so it makes it easier to level up your matamas and then this one makes it easier to find new matamas which are both very good to have active so you're gonna have those three active um, pretty much the whole game if you can if you have the resources to do so and the other thing you can do is when you'll unlock these um, this bath <laughs> pool area and it's going to have uh, pool purity, which is going to actually help you during your missions as well. So it's going to um, fight the miasma, which you'll notice um, basically you're going to gain this to like toxin when you're out in the open world, certain areas or certain bosses you're fighting on missions. And if that uh, maxes out, then you automatically fail. So this buff is going to help um, la make you last longer in the fight and also going to give you certain bonuses. So you'll see here. They all have different building smithing monetary. Um, this um, lady it will give you an extra shake of branch every time uh, if you're lucky. So you're going to get 
a few different things. Uh, I think it's random if you get small, but um, I would suggest you take the professor um, every time she's available because it'll be all the male characters you have unlocked at a high like so. The only people you can take to the bath are people that you've brought on a lot of missions with, um, and you've talked to them a lot in town um, throughout the story, and they'll, you'll gain reputation with them, and eventually they'll say, I'll share a bath with you. And then they'll give you the bonus. So the special th thing with the Professor is you have a chance to get the extra Achina stones, which we'll go take a look now, because Professor has a sort of crafting type station in her house which will let you get extra mats um, for forging new armors and weapons or upgrading them which is very helpful so that's why she's basically the number one pick every time you go to the pool because if you can get those stones you'll see here oh she's she's in her house right now so there's this kind of forge here and it'll let you turn certain items into other items and for me also yeah, I was missing the diamonds so you get these up to three large machine stones every time um, her buff activates if you get lucky enough for for that one to go off and then you can go ahead and trade those stones directly one to one for um, certain items that you that you need which is just great <laughs> just basically extra extra mats all the time and whatever specific ones you need you can probably trade for in there obviously there's certain ones you can't she doesn't have every item in the game in there certain ones you have to pick up in the in the world or you can only get them um, from the boss drops so honestly it's not it doesn't fix all your problems but it uh, it does help all right so that's I think that's everything in town um, the last thing we will look at is um, so if you're just going out into the world and you don't have a story mission um, currently locking your team, this is where you're going to go to talk to the lady to basically select your teammates um, for open world exploration. So you can see that there's check marks on those three characters. And those are the ones you'll see in the top left right now that I have selected. If you don't go talk to her, you'll basically be going out solo. <laughs> Unless you have a story, like a lot of the story missions are going to lock a certain team um, for until you complete that mission. So that'll happen as well. So you got to watch out for that because certain certain missions or quests you're going to need to bring certain people with you in the open world, and you need to make sure that they're with you when you go out. All right. So we've gone through all that. And then I think we should go in the open world and take a look at a few things. Like the miasma. So I'm going to go out on normal. So the way you can set the difficulty setting is if you've beat... <laughs> that only happens if you've beat the game already, I believe. So I don't, you're not going to have to worry about that. So everything's going to... Just assume that everything in the open world is on normal. Um... Because when you're, if you're looking at other kind of guides to see what, what exact Matama you want to unlock, it's going to tell you to fight a certain mob on normal or expert. And the way that works is um, the open world is always on normal unless you change the setting of the stone here. But for missions, um, you'll see a star rating. So you'll see here that everything is a yellow star. In the top there, it doesn't matter how many stars there are, that means it's on normal. So every, basically everything from phase 1 to 6 is considered normal. And as soon as you go to phase 7, you'll see that one of the stars turns red at the top there. And everything is considered expert level in phase 7 for single player. But you'll see that the multiplayer missions um, are even harder. Like, they're higher stars than your single player stuff because... They kind of expect you to have other real players with you, <laughs> uh, which we'll, tell you, we'll take a look at as well. So I'll go out in the open world to... Yeah, let's just go out the front door here. So we're going to take a look at the ability. So if you're pressing down, for me, I'm using an Xbox controller on my PC. 
when I'm pressing down on my right joystick, it's going to activate this sort of demon vision mode. And what it's going to do is detect either hidden monsters, which I don't think there's too many in the first area. So you can see in some, some monsters are only visible when you have your demon vision up. Uh, when you're fighting a boss, it's going to show the boss's health bar. So you'll be able to see how much health that the um, boss actually has. And then you're going to get a bunch of quests during the game, which <laughs> took me a while to figure out myself, that um, basically there's going to be monster tracks. So you're going to have to track down a demon. Uh, and to do that, you're going to have to have your demon vision on. And then you're going to see like footprints popping up, and you're going to follow the footprints until you get to the boss. And then fight the boss once the uh, footprints run out, and it'll it should take you to the right boss. Sometimes you have to run by a boss and it tricks you, <laughs> so just make sure you follow all the, the footprints. You'll see here we have open, see these little items that appear on the mini-map uh, in the top right there. You'll have the outer circle there is your miasma. So you'll see that I've cleared uh, the area, so I'm not really getting any miasma here. Um, there's a little chest here with an item as well. We can go, ooh, the sword. But this is a mini boss. So you'll see, like, if you see, like, a little symbol like this, it'll be sort of like a, a miniature boss that you're going to end up fighting. Also, it's going to look like a big boss at the start of the game. And he's, <laughs> he's dead pretty quick. You'll see my, the Tanko there singing and trying to help... Uh, <laughs> But this is, I only have one Tanko that has a, a Matama divide in him, and he wasn't in town when I went to uh, feed, <laughs> feed a Tanko to bring with me. So you should be able to um, hit start button and hit X to look around the map. You can zoom out with the joystick, and then you can set yourself a marker. So let's go do a quick joint operation here. Hopefully it'll be some kind of boss, but... It might not be. So you can set a marker and then you'll get sort of like a flashing arrow to the direction which you're supposed to go. Uh, doesn't look like it's going to be a boss. This looks like we're going to get a bunch of random <laughs> mobs here. So what these also do as low as as well as um, lowering the um, uh, I guess or no, I guess I'm not lowering I'm raising the safety <laughs> uh, level of the area um, if you do so you'll see that that Itaru guy in the top left corner has joined my party so they'll join your party for um, basically a limited time after you complete whatever mission they have so if you're having trouble with a boss um, in the area uh, you might want to go do that extra mission right before the boss so you can bring an extra character to help fight it. Just a nice little tip. Uh, let's see if we can head towards the big stone. So wait, you want to talk to me? Okay, you're happy. Thank you. <laughs> it's... You can basically follow the path here. You're going to want to look for, there's I guess, what, seven or eight major stones that you can actually um, teleport back and forth between town. Um, the rest of them, you're going to want to purify them anyway because uh, they're going to lower like the miasma increase and offer you these little stones here. So when you click on these stones in the outer world, it's just going to erase um, heal all your miasma but when you click that in a actual monster like mission fight it's going to increase your not increase but uh, re restore your stocks of your abilities so you'll see these stones throughout the world some of them um, are just well they're all going to spawn a, a sub boss that you have to kill to purify them and then you can always um, go back with them so you can always go home with the stone but only certain ones you can teleport back 
back to town with. So this is one of them. Uh, but you'll see any other one that you kind of cross over. Um, won't um, just take you. It'll only take you home. It won't. You'll it won't be able to teleport to it. So just be aware of that. And then also when you come back to town, um, that extra guy that you just helped, uh, he's going to leave. Or if you leave the area uh, as well that, that you um, did the mission in, he will also, or he or she, will, will leave your party. All right, so let's go online and we take a look at that. So if you want to go online, do that. Uh, I'm going to create one because you can look for a lobby, but there's just not a lot of people, uh, too many people playing it. Uh, I'm not sure if there's even crossplay, uh, which they probably should have done if they didn't, um, because that would have definitely helped with finding players to play with. So what happens here when you come online is you're just going to have to be able to choose missions here, and right, let's do a DLC mission that's uh, a really good one for <laughs> um, Cryptid Bones here. So. This is the second last mission. You'll see it's a... I'm not sure why this one has, is such a high level star. He's actually not that bad. <laughs> but Because he, he's only one boss. But it's going to give you the option to bring all your NPCs like in single player. But if you find any other players online and do a few missions with them, it's actually going to give you access to their NPCs. Um, although it doesn't really... <laughs> help to know like unless you know the actual um you have to look up their weapon basically to know if it's a tier six or not and then it, it the only thing it tells you is how many like upgrades they have on it so you can see that this this tebow is my friend there <laughs> he's got a plus 10 bow um whereas the other two random guys i don't even know why i didn't put it like keep their name maybe it only keeps them if their name if they're on your friends list um but these other two guys have tier six weapons, but you you wouldn't be able to tell. So these guys, like you, just have no idea. But also, if they if they only have a plus one or something, they're probably uh, pretty new to the game. But you're gonna want to try to find the strongest people you can by either sitting in a lobby, letting them join, or just basically searching um, for lobbies if you can. Although I have not found anyone close to <laughs> to end game like I am. Which is kind of frustrating because um, bringing NPCs online is is not a great idea because they they don't upgrade their weapon. Basically, they're never going to be as strong as as real players. And the problem with the NPCs is they don't attack. They don't focus the target. So if there's two or three bosses out, they're going to split all their damage and have their shields basically. <laughs> They're just going to work on the, the boss's shield and then they just keep switching targets and it takes forever to kill the bosses because they just keep regenerating their shields because they're constantly switching targets. And then another thing that happens is if there's multiple bosses, when a boss gets um, like a super low HP, they kind of have like an enrage. And <laughs> that's basically, they're going to set off multiple enrages because they're just doing dumb NPC shit. <laughs> Honestly, this is not the best team right now, but these are the highest level uh, people I've played with online, so I'm going to bring them with me, and then just hope that I can do most of the damage myself. Uh, and that they... The good thing is, honestly, they're, they're designed to help pick you up, and you can use the... I believe it's um, one of the triggers. So you can tell them what to do, sort of, as a team but it's not gonna stop them you can't tell them to target a specific monster which was would be nice for them to put in so I basically set them to hey priority on attacking um, I, just, I haven't really seen too much of a difference in what they do based on what they there's probably small differences Looks like I'm knocking off parts. So you can see here if I activate my demonize, you can see the top bar is their shield, and the bottom bar is the health. You don't want to keep this the, your demonize on uh, for too long because it's going to drain your uh, focus, stamina, whatever you want to call it. You call it focus in this game, honestly, but it's just the same. So you want to turn that off. Um, you can use it to check the HP of the monster. 
and honestly uh, you can kind of use it to locate items quicker as well so you can see that there's items on the side here I'm gonna go grab it oh is it an invisible item? oh it is <laughs> well there we go that's a nice little trick trick I'll say during the fight here since we're doing a boss uh, when you knock off a body part you gotta collect it by hitting your R1 button which can be annoying too the NPCs will sometimes stop fighting and just stand there and take attacks so they could <laughs> um, can't get the body parts for you so, which sometimes is good if they're purifying because you don't want to do it uh, other other times it's bad. <laughs> See, like there. See, I just took one right in the face. Trying to <laughs> I'm gonna heal myself. This is boss. So you can see I have my my one ability there. My my hand ultimate is ready to use. Okay, listen, Mister. I saw that one coming. I'm just gonna. All right, I'm gonna try and. You only have a certain amount of time to purify the body part once it's on, uh, or else it'll just disappear. Let's see what we got. I got a moan of resentment. Alright, so let's go ahead and see if we can pull off something here. Should we try to hit him in the face? Oh, say cheese. Oh, looks like we got the body. I'm gonna go ahead and smash it. Also, you can't break the main body, but I think I just knocked something else off. And you can see that my teammates almost have their that's the first layer anyway with the Naginata as well almost has a regular ultimate I'm taking longer to get mine I'm gonna go ahead and activate my combo again so I can <laughs> basically it looks like I have like older instinct or something I'm just going crazy Also, if you want to see the build I'm using, I got a build video up on my channel already. I'm going to be doing some more builds. And when you look at the build videos too, you're going to learn more about Matamas. Which I, I guess I could take a quick look at before the end of this video. But this is that was one of the best missions to upgrade your weapons and armor late game right there. So if you have your DLC, um, definitely um, that mission right there. You'll see you'll get seven to nine encrypted bones. And then I guess I could show you the other mission that's kind of less than a minute. So I'm gonna go back offline for this one. And I'm gonna go to missions phase seven I'm just gonna do the, the first one called new threats and this is gonna be like the best um, mission in the game to farm diamonds as well as I believe uh, mysterious claw large so remember too that between every mission you're gonna have to use the pool again uh, it only gives you one one time once you complete a mission it basically falls off and you're gonna have to go to the bath again. Also, now that I'm in single player, it's gonna do a cutscene. <laughs> if you're online, it just gives you the <laughs> the buff, and it's like, here you go, and you're like, yay! <laughs> but uh, you have to wait the extra time for some, to penalize you for playing single player. <laughs> All right, thanks for the purification skill. Alright, before we go into this last mission, that really takes less than a minute. Um, if you guys want to see some Matamas. So, honestly, there's different kinds of Matamas here. You're going to be unlocking throughout the game um, by doing either story missions, defeating certain bosses on certain difficulties, or just by. I, think, I believe you gain a lot of Matamas through the story mode too by just. Um, I guess people divide their matamas and share them with you. So you're going to gain a lot of matamas that way too, but most of them are just from, from killing, but a few side quests here and there as well. 
and then you're going to have tons of choices. <laughs> uh, the, thing, the only thing you really need to know is there's um, bonuses to look up. So you can see here, this at the bottom here, the Yamato Tikaru. So each Matama has a type, and then have like a, I don't know, I'd say a clan uh, beside them, and as well as some of them have like an extra bonus if they're with a certain Matama. If you combine them with a certain Matama, uh, and you're using both of them at the same time, you'll gain an extra bonus. So you can see here, it's kind of under like the, <laughs> if you look at the top there, the, where it says RB, if the right button, and you go all the way to the bottom there, right after the, where the clan says your, there's a kind of like a question mark, a uh, circle symbol, uh, another little symbol there, and that's that's what like basically indicates um, the possibility for some sort of extra combination. But normally, if you have three of the same um, type of Matama, you gain a bonus. So for me, having three speed, I'm going to gain... Usually it's extra um, stacks of your abilities. So you can see here, the basic value is eight and eight for energy and agility. Because I have three speed Matamas, I can use... I get nine stacks of each one instead. And I believe it's the same for every every kind of Matama like that, so attack defense, so you'll get different extra stacks of, of your abilities. If you're using three of the same clan, you're gonna gain uh, usually some kind of immunity, so you'll be like either immune to ice, immune to sleep, you know, some kind of bad debuff is gonna give you like immunity um, towards that, or some kind of defensive extra bonus that way. So just, just depending how you wanna use your Matamas, Obviously, they're going to give different abilities depending on which um, spot you put them in. Your weapon, uh, Matama, is going to give you your main abilities. So you can see that they're going to change here depending on which type you have. All these different moves. So that's going to be your main slot, so you're going to choose wisely <laughs> which um, which moves you like first. So then that will be your main type. And then you're going to get an evasion skill in the middle slot. Which is going to be defensive. Also, it's going to be some sort of. Usually, it's something that happens when you're about to die. <laughs> so either you get healed, or you don't die, or you get. You know, whenever you get hit or something, you get more defense. So this is more of a defensive ability. And then your third one is is going to also deal with your your claw ability. Um, and this one you can activate, I think, whenever you want. And then depending, most of them. Um, are pretty much just like a buff, some kind of buff for um, either damage or like um, trying to like uh, control your enemies or improve one of your other abilities. So this is kind of like more like off more I'd say more offensive um, buffs, defensive buffs, and then your actual like moves going to your first Montama. And then we'll take you to another little bonus here. So if you Alright, so I already selected the mission. I just didn't know <laughs> if I had to reselect. Sometimes you have to reselect it if you change stuff. And this this mission is definitely the best for farming diamonds. Here, I'm gonna activate my abilities again even though there's no boss or anything. Second wave is attacking. Oh no. Also, the only other thing we didn't really look at was the um, the hand, which I have, haven't really used much. Also, you're just going to use the right trigger here, and you can pull yourself around to enemies, or up cliffs, or certain areas of the map. You're going to have to use the hand to, like, break them down so you can pass through. So just make sure, like, you're using your demon eyes, too, which will help you um, see the targets for... Um, or your demon hand, and then you can travel around. So you can use it to pull the boss as well, also. And then you need to get your your ult for your hand. It's gonna be good. Show us the diamonds, please. Please make with the diamonds. <laughs> I think you get three to five for this one, and then potentially some claws as well. Only got two. I guess it's oh, we got four claws though. 
but at least it, those are two good missions to farm later game uh, once you're you're ready to upgrade all your stuff to 12. I believe that is covers most of the game. Um, if there's anything I missed, I guess <laughs> just let me know. But if you also if you just have any questions, anything else you want to know, just leave them in the comments below. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next video. Hello everyone who made it to the end of the video. This is Laser Pan Games, reminding you to smash that like button leave a comment below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already it really helps out and if you're looking for even more content check out my patreon here where i post exclusive video content every month and you'll have access to all of that